Hi, James with the OneHourSmartHome.com and today we are going to show you how to hook up a Nest thermostat if you only have two wires or the wiring diagram for a two wire thermostat in two wire this sys system. So uh, what we've got here is uh, the boiler or furnace over here and a diagram of the Nest thermostat. If you were to take the front face plate of the Nest off, you're gonna have a back plate and the back plate is gonna have all these different items on it. Y1, Y2, G, O, B, R, C, R, H, a star terminal, C, W1, W2. Now, to understand kind of how a thermostat works and how this wiring diagram works, I'm gonna give you a little bit of a background on uh, HVAC systems. So typically, if you have a two wire system, what you have is either a boiler or a heat only system. It's possible you have a cooling only system, but very rare. And what happens is inside your boiler furnace, you've got high voltage and you've got a burner that will ignite when it receives a signal from the thermostat. And it receives a signal from the thermostat by completing a circuit. It's basically just a switch that closes and then that signal goes through the circuit and it tells your boiler or furnace to turn on. And how a boiler or furnace works is that this R terminal is the power terminal and it will go in a wire to your thermostat, whether it was your existing thermostat or your Nest thermostat. And then it will go through the Nest and the Nest is calling for heat so it's turned up to 90 degrees or whatever temperature it's turned up to. And then that power goes back down through the W1, closes the internal circuitry or switch. Power comes back down the W1, goes down the W1 wire, goes to the W1 terminal. And that signals for your boiler or furnace to ignite, which is typically done with an electric igniter. And in older furnaces or boilers, maybe a pilot light. But most modern furnaces these days use an igniter as well as most modern boilers use this igniter as well. So that's kind of how everything works. And if you've only got two wires, this is the wiring diagram. You'd connect R to RH and W to W1. And typically these wires are gonna be red and white. Not always though, because sometimes you have four wire thermostat wire, which is what builders use, and uh, somebody wasn't following the conventions and they just used two other wires. So it's important that you take a picture before of what your wiring is on your thermostat and then match that with the Nest. But if you didn't, how you could check to see which wires go where is typically on your boiler or furnace, make sure that you've turned it off. There's usually a switch next to the boiler or furnace that will turn it off. If you don't have one of those, just turn it off at your circuit breaker. And you can open up a panel and inside you're gonna see these terminals on the electronics or terminal block of the furnace. It looks like a control board, uh, just a little electronics thing. It's either in the top or the bottom of the furnace. Typically it's at the bottom. But uh, what you're gonna do is you're gonna then look for the terminals, follow the wires that are going in the furnace, make sure once again the power is off and you'll see where those wires go. They will eventually go to a terminal block and that terminal block will tell you which wires are on your boiler and you just wanna match whatever wires are on those terminals in the boiler or furnace with the Nest. Very simple. So that's how you wire a Nest thermostat with a two wire hookup. Now, a lot of you are probably gonna have an old thermostat which may have had RC and RH and a jumper wire between them. On the Nest, you do not need to have a jumper wire between RC or RH. That is only for your old style thermostat. That jumper wire is done internally in the nest, like in its circuitry. So there's no actual need for a physical jumper wire on RC and RH. You can put the R wire in the RH terminal or in the RC terminal, and it will work the exact same. It doesn't hurt the nest, and it is not wrong or it is not right. But for matter of convention, I typically, when using a heating system, put the R terminal, the R wire in the RH for power heating 
And if you were to have a dual fuel system, which means you had an air conditioner as well, but you don't because you only have two wires, that's why you're watching this video, then you could put the power from the other system, your cooling system in the RC. But you don't have to with a two wire system. You can put the power in RC or RH. It is just an input for power into the nest. It powers up the nest. It's providing power to the nest. So that's pretty much all you need to know for wiring up a two wire nest thermostat, how to hook it up. But I'm gonna go through and just explain the other wiring terminals anyways, if you wanted to learn a little bit more about the furnace and system. Otherwise, you're free to go and wire up your nest exactly like this shows. W to W1, white. R to RH, red wire. But I'll explain all these other uh, thermostat not notations, conventions for you so you kind of understand. Y1, that is cooling. That's a call for air conditioning. Uh, Y1 is if you only have single stage cooling, you're only going to have one wire there. Y2 is if you've got two stage cooling. So that means that you have uh, a second higher stage of cooling. It delivers more cool air faster. It's basically just two speeds for your cooling. G is your G wire. That's the fan and typically a green wire. And by the way, the Y wires are typically yellow. Uh, the G wire is typically green or uh, the G wire and it is a fan wire. That basically just blows air throughout your house if you have a air handler furnace style HVAC system that has a blower motor. The G can just independently blow air throughout your home without the need to provide heating or cooling. OB, that is for heat pumps and that controls the reversing valve on the heat pump. RC, like we said, that is power. It can be used to power from power from your boiler or your, from your furnace, but the convention is meant for power from a cooling system but with the case of the nest, you can put the power in RC or RH, doesn't matter when you have just a two wire system. RH, that's power again, that's just power input. RH stands for heating power. Star terminal, that is for a humidifier or dehumidifier, allows you to connect one of those and control it with the nest. The C wire is a common wire. That is basically what is effectively a neutral wire. It allows your nest to charge 100% of the time through the C wire without needing to go through one of these other current paths. So how the nest works is it will charge with R and W and for most people, I think it's like 90% of people, you'll never have any issues with power or anything like that. You don't need to worry about it. In a small number of cases, the boiler or furnace does not put enough power out that the nest can suck the power off of it while completing the R to W circuit. In that case, you need a C wire, which allows R to always provide power through the nest in 2C and back to the neutral on the furnace without causing anything to happen, without the thermostat actually going on or switching down and turning on the heat. It basically just lets the battery charge up on the nest. Most people don't need it. We have a video that shows you how to connect a common wire in another video. You can watch that. Just search common wire installation, one hour smart home on YouTube, and that'll pop up. But for most people, you don't need to worry about that. Um, it's just a neutral wire. W2 is two stage heating. That is just a higher stage of heat. So fast heating and W1 is single stage heating. That would be like low speed heating. And most HVAC systems are only going to have one stage. And certainly most boilers are only going to have one stage heating. So for a boiler, one more time, the Nest Thermostat two wire hookup, all you've got is W to W1, and you've got R to RH. And you don't need to worry about a jumper wire because the Nest does that internally and you do not need to add one in any way. It does it in the circuitry. So thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed this video. And if you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel for more great smart home stuff, DIY content, and we will see you next time. Thank you.